So today we are going to talk about uh, declarative lifecycle management of Kubernetes clusters on various clouds. Uh, but before that, I would like to introduce ourselves first. So hi, I'm Ankita Swami. I work as a member of technical staff at uh, VMware. And I have been actively contributing in Cluster API and its provider for AWS. And I'm actually a reviewer for the Cluster API provider AWS as well. And uh, I would like Ashutosh to introduce himself. Sure. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Ashutosh, and you know I work at VMware, and I'm also an active contributor to Cluster API provider Azure. Uh, prior to this, I was working with OpenEVS project, and you know this is a new project that I've been kind of exploring in last couple of months. So hopefully, we'll have fun here. Uh, this is the agenda that you can see on the screen. So we are going to cover around Cluster API, its ecosystem, and how uh, you know, the lifecycle of lifecycle management of Kubernetes clusters are made easy, that two in a declarative pattern. Um, and you know, we'll share, you know, what we have learned while we'll, we try to contribute. And then we'll have a demo at the end where we'll try to create a Kubernetes cluster on Azure and upgrade it or scale the worker nodes. Uh, yeah, Ankita, you can start. Thank you. Um, so as we know that Kubernetes is a complex piece of software, provisioning and managing the life cycle of the Kubernetes cluster is quite tedious in our day-to-day -day operations. So imagine if we have a situation where we have to manage hundreds of clusters and we actually have to provision the production grade cluster, we have to manage the life cycle of each of those production grade clusters and you know, it can get a bit tedious if we are talking in that scale. So the situation can get even more worse when we are actually operating these Kubernetes clusters on different infrastructures like AWS, Azure, GCP. So uh, though Kubeadium is a tool uh, that actually solves the problem of installation of Kubernetes, but it does not help with the lifecycle management of the Kubernetes cluster. So here comes the Cluster API as a rescuer. Cluster API is actually a Kubernetes 6 sub-project which can be used to manage the life cycle of a normal Kubernetes cluster. Uh, but before we get deeper into what this Cluster API is, um, we would go through a recap of Kubernetes controllers and how it works. Cool, thanks. Okay, so how many of you have written a Kubernetes controller or you're aware of? You can raise hands. Okay, cool. Uh, so there was a wonderful talk that uh, you know, my colleague Sivani and Madhur gave around CRDs and conversion. Uh, so I just want to you know, give a little recap of how controllers work. Um, so you know, this is a little picture that I made. I'll try to explain this, what I mean here. But uh, you know, Kubernetes, when we say declarative APIs and reconcilers, what we mean is, you know, we define how we want our system to be in a YAML, and there is some process or reconciler or controller, whatever we can call, it actually keeps reading that state and it tries to take some actions, you know, to actually convert your system onto what you have specified in YAML. For Kubernetes, typically it is a YAML file, and if you can see, it's a dummy code that I've written, you know, until and unless the current state that is you know, captured in a YAML file does not match to your you know, desired state, the controller is going to take actions to do so, right? And uh, you know, a couple of points that you can see. Uh, so the benefit of this reconcile pattern is that you, know, you usually do not instruct what to do. You specify how you want your system to look like. Uh, for example, you know, somebody gave an instruction that, you know, can you please add one replica because I want, you know, to have two replicas and there can be high chances that that instruction got missed, maybe due to some networking thing and, you know, you may never end up into having two replicas and this, that is what you wanted. But at the end, the second kid, he said, you know, I just said that I want two replicas and the controllers on the background is going to check, uh, you know, okay, what the system is right now in. Uh, okay, uh, the current state is one replica, but the intent says that I want to have two replicas, so it will t the controller is going to take actions to do so. 
this replicas, I mean, you know, you can think of like pods, right? When we have a deployment and we say this many pods we want. So this is typically the controllers recap that I wanted to uh, go through. And the SCAPI ecosystem is nothing but a controller that is, you know, based out of QBuilder. Uh, you know, you could define your Kubernetes infrastructure on YAML. You can just do a kubectl apply of that YAML and it is going to provision uh, your Kubernetes cluster on the desired infrastructure. We'll come more on how this different infrastructure hooks in with this CAPI. Okay, uh, this is the CAPI ecosystem that you can see on the screen. So. Essentially, you have a declarative config. Uh, this declarative config is nothing but a YAML file where you specify, I want Kubernetes version x dot yy, and you know you just do a kubectl apply, and uh, this CAPI components, uh, you know, you can install that on in Kubernetes cluster itself. And when it is done, when you do apply this declarative config you know, it can potentially provision your Kubernetes cluster, you know, depending on the cloud that you have asked for. Uh, so if you can see, you know, second and third point, how this CAPI work is, you do have a core controller that we call as CAPI, cluster API, and then you can choose to initialize with AWS or Azure or GCP. Uh, you know, that will install the provider controllers. So essentially, on a high level, there are two controllers. One is the core CAPI controller, and then the provider controller. The responsibility of the provider controller will be to, you know, kind of issue instructions to the respective provider. Um, you know, if you have, let us say, Azure provider, uh, it is going to issue instructions to the Azure APIs to create VMs, networking, and stuff like that. And we have a couple of keywords like, you know, bootstrap cluster, management cluster, and workload cluster. So let me give a walkthrough of this, and in the next slide, we'll understand it in more detail. So, you know, a bootstrap cluster is a simple client, client cluster that you can, so you first create a client cluster, and then you install CAPI and other providers. You have option, you can choose to install provider for Azure or AWS or all of them. And, you know, once you're done installing that, uh, you could actually migrate this bootstrap cluster into a more production grade, uh, for example, on Azure or AWS. Uh, so the difference between bootstrap and management cluster is essentially that, you know, management cluster becomes a little more production grade. Uh, and, uh, you know, now on that management cluster, you could typically do kubectl apply of that declarative config. We'll again see this, uh, we'll expand this declarative config and we'll see what is in there. And once you do that, from that management cluster, you could potentially uh, you know, create different workload clusters where you could deploy your applications. And this could be on Azure or AWS or GCP. Um, <clears throat> This is a little diagram that I made. Um, so this is a bootstrap cluster, and then you know we migrated everything what was into this bootstrap cluster to a you know three control plane node and three worker node Kubernetes cluster. Let's say on Azure or AWS. So what essentially this management cluster has are those CAPI and provider pieces that you can see CAPI pods and CAP star pods. Star means you could have for Azure or AWS or GCP. And bootstrap cluster is similar in that sense. It's just that, you know, we may not be able to maintain this bootstrap cluster because it is a kind cluster. And once you are done with your management cluster, you can do kubectl apply cluster, and you can create a cluster on Azure, or maybe on AWS, or you can see kubectl get cluster, you can get a list of clusters, you know, that are created on different infrastructure. Um, to go like little more into providers, I'll invite Ankita. So um, if we talk about uh, the core cluster APIs, uh, we have some CRs in place, uh, the custom resources, like uh, cluster, machine, machine sets, that are actually reconciled by their own respective controllers. Similarly, even the uh, cluster API providers also have similar kind of APIs or CRs. Uh, like suppose if I take an example of cluster API provider for Azure, 
So it has Azure cluster and Azure machine, which again have their respective controllers, which takes care of creating the actual infrastructure, like uh, doing the network setup, creating the virtual machines, creating load balancers, etc. So uh, there are many other APIs that are actually offered by uh, Cluster API, but we have ignored them as of now for simplicity. So uh, there is a correlation between the core Cluster APIs and uh, the provider APIs. So these cross-references are actually, uh, you know, the Cluster API APIs are actually providing the blueprint to the provider APIs. So when uh, we actually set the statuses and conditions on each of the CR objects, this actually enables us to providing the wiring between the core cluster APIs and the provider APIs. So uh, the status and conditions actually plays an important role here to make this coordination happen. And also, this cross-referencing actually helps us, uh, helps uh, Cluster API to provide a plugin capability such that any of the providers can actually uh, work with the Cluster API in conjunction. So uh, there are other providers as well which are actually provided by the Cluster API, core Cluster API. One of them is a Cube ADM control plane provider. So there comes the Cube, uh, Cube ADM control plane provider, which actually takes care of managing the life cycle of the control plane nodes. Um, so uh, the Cube ADM control plane provider is a default one that is provided by Cluster API, but you f can feel free to bring your own provider as well for managing the control plane uh, life cycle. Also similarly, we have um, bootstrap Kubeadium controller provider, which actually takes care of bootstrapping the Kubernetes nodes, and you know it helps in uh, joining the nodes to the Kubernetes cluster. Again, uh, this CAPBK provider is actually a default one, which is provided by the cluster API. Uh, so here is an example to actually explain all those terms which I have used as of now. So let's say that we actually want to create a simple Kubernetes cluster on Azure. What do we want to do for that? We actually want to apply a YAML onto the Kubernetes cluster, which will have the cluster API and the cluster API provider for Azure, which we call it as CAPZ provider installed on those. And once those gets installed, these are the list of the CRs or the APIs that gets uh, that comes with it. And uh, you know, it gets created on the cluster. So first one is the cluster, which comes from the core cluster API. Then Azure cluster, as the name suggests, it comes from the cluster API provider for Azure. Then we have Kubeadium control plane, Azure machine template, machine deployment, Kubeadium config template, and again, the Azure cluster identity, which is used for the authentication purpose. So we will go in detail regarding all these CR objects one by one. So first comes the cluster CRD. So actually a cluster is defined using the cluster CRD. Uh, so what this means, it actually defines the cluster resource spec, which can actually help us know how the networking is set up, how the, what CIDR blocks we are going to use, and actually what we are using as the domain names for each of the services. And uh, with respect to that, we also have the status set on these objects, which will tell us the information like the endpoint uh, IP address or the port. Uh, so the cluster controller is actually responsible for uh, reconciling the cluster CRD config. And we can notice that here we have reference to Kubeadium control plane and Azure cluster. As I mentioned, Kubeadium control plane is a control plane provider, and the Azure cluster is the infrastructure provider. So uh, this cluster controller actually waits for the infrastructure creation to complete, and then it will sync its status accordingly. Now, the Azure cluster is also created by the uh, cluster controller, which actually deals with creating the actual cluster on the Azure infrastructure. And it also makes the control plane nodes and machines ready to use, such that the overall cluster status is healthy. Uh, there is one more uh, usage of the cluster uh, CRD is that it actually creates the kube config secret for the workload cluster so that we can have access to the workload cluster. <clears throat> 
the next comes uh, machine deployment. Uh, again, the machine deployment uh, can actually provide the declarative updates uh, to the machine sets, which in turn creates or deletes the actual machines. So if we see the correlation, machine deployments is actually uh, analogous to the Kubernetes deployment. The machine sets is analogous to the replica sets, and machines are analogous to the pods. So here, actually, uh, the machine deployment takes care of unowned and unmanaged uh, machine sets inside the cluster. It actually also takes care of reconciling the changes to a machine spec by rolling out two changes. One is the old, and the other was the newly changed spec. And finally, the machine controller actually takes care uh, of creating the provider-specific machine using a template. That is Azure machine template that you can see inside the infrastructure ref mentioned in the YAML. QADM control plane. So it is responsible for managing a set of control plane nodes inside the cluster. Control, uh, QADM control plane provider is actually, again, a default provider. Uh, as I have mentioned in the previous slide, which actually takes care of bootstrapping and uh, also takes care of scaling and deletion of the control plane nodes. Uh, again, unlike the worker nodes, these control plane uh, actually machines do not have any machine deployments. So that's why we need a provider to take care of all this. So as you can see on the screen, uh, this API has actually the capability of ingesting some of the control plane uh, configuration flags, which can be used to install the Kubernetes components like API server and controller manager, etc. cetera. Uh, it is also responsible for initializing the Kubernetes control plane with services like etcd, API server, kubeproxy, CoreDNS, et cetera. Uh, the next one is QADM config template. Uh, it actually defines how uh, the machines should be bootstrapped and joined to the cluster uh, using QADM, uh, that is the provider I was talking about. Uh, no, you can also notice that this configuration was actually referred back in the machine deployment, and where actually each of the machines follow these bootstrap template to join to the cluster. Um, uh, in Ashadosh, you can just go ahead with the other slides. Yeah. Oh, we just, uh, you know, took a look around the APIs that are there, uh, you know, to kind of give a sense of how we can provision a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, you know, this is the cl resource hierarchy. You know, you have a cluster, you know, that kind of maps to a workload cluster. It could be on any of the infrastructure. And then you have machine deployment. Uh, so the role of machine deployment is similar to the role of deployment, you know. It just makes sure that, you know, you roll out your machine worker nodes uh, so you can understand, like, if you have three worker nodes, right, you can have a machine deployment that specifies that I want to have three worker nodes. And machine set is the one who is responsible to, you know, kind of, you know, keep the desired state to what you have stated. And this machine CR is the actual machine CR, which is kind of consumed by the provider controller. And that provider controller is going to actually create machines on the infrastructure. Because we are taking the example of Azure, uh, we can say that you know this is the machine CR, and this machine CR will have all the information captured in there, and the controller would actually act upon that by you know doing the Azure API call to finally you know stand a real machine. Uh, and then we have QADM config and Azure machine. So what happens is like machine CR is actual and general representation of your machine, uh, but for Azure. It becomes an Azure machine. Uh, similarly, for AWS, it will be an AWS machine. Uh, so, uh, you know, for example, if it is an AWS, AWS uh, specific things will go onto this AWS machine. And how it happens is via templates. Uh, you know, maybe we'll see a demo and then we'll understand how this information flows through it. Uh, you can see this is the Azure Cluster CR, and it has like more specific details on what should happen on the Azure infrastructure. Uh, 
like you know the subnets, uh, you know what are the subnets that we want to create, and you specify the subscription ID. Uh, you, you know, this is the Azure machine template that I was talking about. So when you create a machine, uh, by using this Azure machine template, an actual Azure machine is created. Now that actual Azure machine will have all the required information for the controller to you know, bring up an actual virtual machine. Uh, let's see a demo. I'll just play the demo. For the sake of time, I've already created a kind cluster and installed CAPI and CAPZ using cluster CTL. Just to mention that cluster CTL is CLI tool, which is very helpful while trying to operate with CAPI. I've also set up required environment variables and created a secret to authenticate to Azure Cloud. This is very straightforward and can be found on the cluster API talk link. I'll share the relevant links in the next slide, but let me just pull out the pods here. So this, these are the pods in the kind cluster. You know, you can see this is the CAPG controller manager and this is the CAPI controller manager. So this is actually cloud provider Azure. And this is the control plane provider that we were talking about in previous slide. And this is the QADM bootstrap prov provider. Uh, let me show you the secret that we just created. So this is the secret that I created. Um, this is used for you know authentication purpose to Azure Cloud, and now let me just show you the YAML that I generated using Cluster CTL. This is the cluster YAML, and then we have Azure Cluster, and you can see the QADM control plane where we have arguments for API server, controller manager, and we can see the machine template reference for control plane machines and we want one replica and the version should be 1.22.0. This is the Azure machine template for control plane machine. And this is the machine deployment where we have replica count as one and the version is 1.22.0. I'll just apply this one. got applied cube CTL get clusters. And we can see that the phase is provisioning. We can also use cluster CTL to describe this one, cluster CTL describe cluster, KCD demo cluster. And we can see what phase the target cluster is in. So, you know, right now we have like cluster infrastructure, which does not have a ready state to true. So it's still in the provisioning state. So let us pull cube CTL, get Azure machines, and it is waiting for cluster infrastructure. So it will take some while to get this VMs created on the Azure cloud. Well, it takes a little while to get this created. So we have again fast forwarded the video for the sake of time. And now kubectl get Azure machines. Uh, we can see that the machines are succeeded. Let's also run cluster ctl describe command. And we can see that the status, the status true for control, for cluster infrastructure, control plane and worker. Uh, yeah, we can see a warning here, and this is because we don't have a CNI provider installed yet. Um, so before we do that, let us pull the cube config for this target cluster. So cluster CTL get cube config, and the name of the cluster is KCD cluster, and we will do demo dot cube config and let us use this cube config to see the nodes cube CTL get nodes hyphen hyphen cube config demo dot config cube, cube config 
yes, we can see two nodes. One is control plane node and one is worker node and the version is 1.22.0. Let us install a CNI provider here. So I've already ran this command sometime back. So I'm going to search for it. kubectl apply hyphen hyphen cube config demo.cube config and this should apply the calico cni yaml on the target cluster Cool. Let us save the nodes are ready yet. It can again take some while to get the status updated to ready, but this should be quick. Yes, the nodes are in ready state now. And now I'll just quickly try to scale up the worker machine. I'll add one more worker machine. To do that, kubectl get machine deployment, and I'll edit this machine deployment. Let me just copy this one, and kubectl edit md, and I'll search for replicas. I'll make it two. It is getting edited. I'll again run cluster CTL describe command. And as you can see, you know, it is waiting for available machines because now we want two replicas. So let's see if that got created. Cube CTL get machines. Uh, we can see there is one machine that is in provisioning state from last 21 seconds. KubeCTL get Azure machines. And this is the new machine that is being created. KubeCTL get Azure machines. So we can see that the bootstrap is in progress. Uh, for the interest of time, I'm like skipping the upgrade part, uh, but you know, this is how you can do via the kubectl edit engine and just propagating the information on the YAML. Uh, you know, this is very useful. Uh, like I found it very interesting when I started to contribute on the project. You know, you can do kubectl and put everything on the YAML and you can create a Kubernetes cluster and you know, do the lifecycle management, upgrade it and stuff like that. Uh, obviously there are complex use cases and you know, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, and let me move to the slide. Uh, so this is what I wanted to show in the demo, and I have added some links how you can get involved, uh, you know, on the Cluster API channel, or you can suggest your use cases. Do you have any question? Like, this is it for uh, the talk, and this is what we wanted to show. Thanks.